If spirituality tends to refer to non-hierarchical beliefs and practices, then what might spiritual anarchism refer to? A lot, it would seem. The term has applied to Rastas, Catholic workers, Dadaists, Charlie Chaplin, Starhawk, and many, many others. In the 1800s, it simply referred to people who rejected church authority. When discussing spiritual anarchism, people often refer to figures such as Lao Tzu, Tolstoy, Gandhi, and Peter Lamborn Wilson, a.k.a. Hakim Bey, who drew his pseudonym from the Moorish Science Temple. Traditionally stateless societies and shamans commonly serve as both spiritual anarchist inspiration and archetype. We find one of the oldest explicit proponents of spiritual anarchism in Sri Aurobindo, who inspired the largest eco-city attempt in the world, Oroville, in southern India. Aurobindo argued as early as 1915 that once humans had sufficiently spiritually evolved, we would no longer need government. Known as the mother, Mira Alfasa and many others, founded Oroville in 1968, where Orovillians still live and work communally today. African-American scholar and activist W.E. Du Bois advocated a similar type of divine anarchy as early as the 1920s, yet believed that we first needed equality in society to enable the free soul. Many who identify as spiritually anarchist practice veganism, holistic ecology, and non-hierarchical rituals. Yet, while some also embrace technology, drug use, nationalism, or capitalism, others reject all of them in favor of sober living, simplicity, and communal sharing, or some innovative blend of their own. If words function as signs, then the sign of spiritual anarchism seems to point in different directions at the same time. Spiritual anarchists, perhaps, like it that way. <laughs>